You might be cool, but are you deep cool? Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese's the 4 Pins Ronji, a Wookie Triple XL. And we have a new variant of the AK400 now with a digital variety. They actually, I got the first product that they ever did, the CH510 Mesh Digital in the digital format. And now they're adding the digital screen to basically everything, that being sort of like the testing point, the origination point for it. We do see it on a lot of high-end CPU coolers, mostly water coolers. On the actual pump head, you normally have then a digital screen with a readout of your temperature or something that you can customize. And now you can get that even on a cooler like an AK400 at sub 1000 Rand. So you don't have to break the bank to look cool and be cool while doing it because the performance from the sucker, you'll see it is very, very good. But Let's start off from the top and go through what's in the box. You get very nice fittings and finishes with this in a very clever way of then attaching the CPU to the cooler. You get one of their very, very good fans. I think this is from the FK series, the high airflow series. You can get these in three fan packs and they have fully rubberized corners, which is obviously fantastic for rattle and any vibration that that would normally cause is then eliminated by that. The cooler itself is exactly the same as the standard AK400, just with that digital piece on top. Now, like I said, getting it attached to the actual CPU socket on the primary mount is a little bit cumbersome. You might want to have an extra set of hands. I've done it um, umpteen times, so it's pretty fluid for me. But I think for a lot of people, having the back plate in with the little plastic garret on top and then getting that screw in there isn't going to be that easy. But once that frame is attached, then it's two screws. And then both of those screws on the other side are then spring loaded. So it's not going to rattle out and it's not going to cause any noise. And you're going to get just the right amount of pressure as well because it's now a spring loaded mechanism. So very, very nice touch. I think you'll agree over there from, from Deep Cool. And the look and feel of this thing is absolutely fantastic. Now connecting up all of these features is also sort of interesting. You've got an RGB and a daisy chain system for the RGB, which is very, very standard. But to get the digital readout, you have to then connect it to one of the spare USB extensions on the bottom of your motherboard. And the cable for this is pretty damn long. You are going to be able to route it right around the back of your case and into the bottom there very nicely to keep it looking neat and clean. I did it purposefully across the top because I wanted to show you how much space there actually is. You could, even if you've got a very big case, it shouldn't be too hard to route that around the back of your motherboard like that. Now it looks and feels absolutely fantastic. The build quality is top notch once again from Deepcool. And generally that's come with what I've come to expect from them. Everything I've used from them just about has been like 10 out of 10 of there on, especially where price versus performance is considered. And it's more of the same with the performance being looked at now. We are gonna compare it to an H100 to 40 millimeter. That's our test bench setup specifically for a reason because 240s are pretty much the best bets these days in general for CPU cooling. And you'll see that, yeah, uh, the 13600K at full 200 watts, it does get a little bit warm. It is, a, it is a warm boy and even at a 22 degree ambient temperature in the overcast day that we have here in Johannesburg, it's still going up there. It's still going to get quite warm and obviously comparing that to a 50% on this cooler, they shouldn't be as comparable as they are, but it is going to perform a little bit better because there's water cooling and two fans compared to just one. So don't forget that when you look at the performance result, even though we're looking at about a 5% performance improvement with having just one fan at 50% compared to two at 50%, there's just more surface area and stuff with the water cooler. Except for the fact that when we then double the fan speed, now the temperatures look a lot more comparable and there's no real noise to report. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to use the sound meter as I would normally because of rain and stuff and thunder and everything that was going on during my testing time. But there's not a lot of noise that comes from these from deep cool fans. They have very, very good decibel ranges. I would say it's probably sub 45, even at full chat, even closer to 40 dB. And that's usually what we see as the midpoint for a lot of fans and when they start becoming audible. This thing maxes out at 1,900-ish RPM, let's say 1,800 to 1,900 RPM. And it was running obviously at half of that, so about 900 RPM on the 50% fan test. So it does have the capacity to get there. So what I'm going to assume, I think quite safely over here, is if you had another FK120, 
you could use the spare brackets that this guy comes with and attach one of those to the back just to increase that airflow ever further. I would always suggest that you use the matched fans because the way that they push air is going to affect one another and you could end up hurting the bearing of the rear fan. So it's better if they are the same, then the airflow is going to be pretty much the same in the same environment and you're going to have that back fan last longer. I've done it where I've mixed and matched fans. It just means the back fan dies a little bit earlier than usual. So what do I think of Deep Cool's digital series? I'm kind of in love with them. I think they're flipping awesome, guys. They look so cool. It's just, it's nerdy in just the right way, isn't it? And the RGB is a nice touch. It's not over the top. And the new digital line and the screens and stuff on them are absolutely fantastic. I would have done the AK620 with this, except it's just a lot of testing, waiting for these benchmarks and stuff to finish at 25 minutes each. Yeah, it becomes two to three hours per cooler worth of testing. So it takes a long time. So unfortunately, I haven't been able to do it all. And I kind of want to do them at the same time on the same day so that the ambient temperatures are similar. And so tomorrow, we are going to compare the AK400 to its bigger brother in the AK620 to see how much better surface area really is. And uh, I think that comes with two fans as well. I'm not sure, but we'll see tomorrow. Until then, hope you guys stay safe, keep well. If you have enjoyed this review, please hit us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you on the flip side. Sorry, I almost forgot. <laughs>